in closer to the viewers' comments. I'm just going to say a few brief things before we begin. Number one, when you choose to comment on my YouTube channel, there are terms and conditions, there are rules that you must follow. It's my house. I expect you to follow the rules. If you don't, your comment probably will not be published. I ask that you be honorable and graceful, i.e. respectful of everyone here. Don't go around telling people what they should or shouldn't do. If you come here making claims, making claims about this or that or the third or something that's happened to you or whatever, having to do with grammar or courts or whatever, you better be able to certify your correct sentence structure knowledge because this is a correct sentence structure channel and I am going to call you to the carpet on it. If you start making claims about something that you perhaps don't know what you're talking about, it's very important for the safety of the vessel. If you have closure on correct sentence structure, you should be able to provide that proof like that. So keep that in mind. The energy you bring here, I will return. I will balance it out with rule one, rule equal. So without further ado, let's get to the comments. Not too long ago in a live stream I did, I put up a poll where I asked the viewer, do you believe that story that Colin David Ivan Wynn Colin Miller told where he was pronounced dead, he was on an autopsy table, the doctor was performing an autopsy on him, they removed his heart from his dead body, and then while on the autopsy table, the heart began beating, and then they put the heart back. And then David continued to live. I asked, you know, it was a poll, yes or no. Do you believe that story? And AAAA said yes. I just voted yes on the poll. And then I asked them, or I said, according to known science, a non-beating heart cannot suddenly begin beating outside the body. And I mean known science, as in peer-reviewed science, Papers have been written on it. Experiments have been done. However many autopsies. Think about how many autopsies have been performed all over the world. Never has there ever been recorded, logged, and certified a heart taken out of a dead body, put on a table, and then the heart spontaneously starts beating. It hasn't been recorded anywhere and I said if the heart is beating when removed from the body it can continue beating up to three to five minutes before it stops but it has to already be beating when removed also you can keep it you know a little maybe four to five hours if you put it on ice hence heart transplants and things like that but this is just simple logic that I'm sharing here easily googled easily found out so I said, I'm curious as to why you voted yes. Would you mind sharing? And then they in turn say, is there any proof it's not possible for the heart to beat again outside a body? <laughs> so the reason I'm sharing this here, because I've already done a video about this. All right, I've already, and I, if I remember, I will definitely leave a link up there somewhere, over there. And you can go watch that video. But the reason I'm sharing it here is because this is a huge stumbling block for a lot of people psychologically. There is no proving a, ne a negative. Even Colin David Eiffel and Wynne Colin Miller said there is no proving a negative. And this goes into a lot of the postal mechanics as well. You do not use fractional stamps. You only use whole number stamps. And an example that... that I'm very fond of using and I've heard other people use as well. If I ask you to go to the store for me, am I going to ask you to, am I going to give you a list of all the things I don't want or all the things I do want? And that's in a nutshell the psychology of this. You can prove a negative. You can't really prove a positive. It's something doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. <laughs> it's less than zero. <laughs> It can only be thought about in theory, in opinion, in assumption, presumption. With correct sentence structure, we're here to, to prove what exists, not what doesn't exist. If it doesn't exist, it doesn't exist. 
just because you can't prove it's not possible for the heart to beat again outside the body doesn't mean that it can't. Here's a good one from TikTok from Tai Tun Bear. And they say, authority comes from who can maintain the threat of violence over another. And then I gave Kuliana, I said, by your logic, pedophiles have authority over children because they maintain a threat of violence over the child. Interesting mindset you have. And this, friends and neighbors, is the fiction mindset that might makes right. Might, on a geometric level playing field, of rule one, rule equal, does not make right. Okay? Now, force, if you force someone to do something against their will, that does not give you authority over them. That just means that you made them do something they didn't want to do. You forced them to do something. You raped them. Rape is not synonymous with authority. It's disgusting, and it's repugnant, this type of mindset. And it really, what's that cartoon character's name? Peter Griffin. It really grinds my gears when I hear people talk like this. I don't get too, too upset about it, but it's that bully type of mentality that I see in the fiction system, I see it with Colin Russell hyphen J. Colin Gould, especially since David Wynn Miller passed away. Uh, I think David kept him in check, and now he's just running rampant with this type of mentality. Might makes right. He even said it in that Piercing Dynasty video. Might makes right. <laughs> he claims to be kind and loving, but his words tell a different story and his actions tell a different story as well as you can see a whole page of negativity on his website of people who are not authorized and are disqualified as if he's some sort of authority of grammar which he's not because he can't even write a correct sentence structure if he can show it to me give me a link to a correct sentence structure document that he's written that has zero mistakes on it. If you think you can do that, I have some oceanfront property that I can sell you in Idaho. Next comment comes from Tin Rib Music, and they say, for this claimant and viewer's sensation of the cognition is, with this claim of the self's state, with this claim of the well-being, pleasant and of a good mind focus with this sense of the location with this balance of the honor and grace with the maintenance of the rule one and rule equal with the balance query conveyance querent Jason Matthew by this claimant query maintainer Jonathan Simon Bell. I like the correct sentence structure. What I don't like is the haphazard appear, to my knowledge, to my perception, haphazard use of the colons, which I have to guess Jonathan is using because of the space limitations of the comments field of YouTube. Because I do the same thing. Sometimes I will use quantum grammar shorthand. But I don't really mix it. I either go full shorthand or I try to find a different way to convey it. Because this is just confusing, especially if someone doesn't know quantum grammar, they're, they're not going to know what the hell this says. But I can see um, they're claiming well-being, pleasant, and of good mind focus. However, I do see some particles of negation here in the facts, such as the modifier ing in well hyphen being. ing is a 
gerund modifier. So one would not use that in effect in correct sentence structure. Other than that, it's a pretty strong sentence. Uh, well done, Jonathan. This student, Captain John, viewer from Port Nelson, New Zealand, gives thanks and balance back with your video's query by sharing this now feeling sensation pleasant with a good mind today. How are you, Jason? Colin Jonathan hyphen Simon. Well, thank you for asking, Jonathan. I'm very well. Cheers. Great job on your correct sentence structure. Truth Seeker 6534 says, so I'm not into grammar a lot. People I try to show don't understand syntax at all. I know my spelling crap, but with the syntax key, what a good way to practice this. So I see a few contradictions with the, with the logic here, Truth Seeker. So you say, I'm not into grammar a lot. People I try to show don't understand syntax. Well, here's the issue. If you don't understand syntax, how do you, how do you expect to be able to explain it to another person? If you're not into the grammar, how can you expect them to be into the grammar? Because this is about the grammar. And if you're not into the grammar, then how can you expect anyone else to be? If you don't know the grammar, how can you expect to explain it to anyone else? Do you see what I'm saying? You see the dichotomy here? First, you have to learn the grammar. You have to be into it. Into it. You have to be interested. You have to have a reason. Learn it. Get closure on it. Once you know it like the back of your hand, then you can share it with other people. And they're not going to look at you like you're crazy. Because if you try to share something you don't understand and you don't have closure on, it doesn't matter if it's grammar or anything else. If you don't have closure on it, if you don't know what it is you're talking about, and they start asking you questions that you don't have the answers to, they're just going to look at you like you're nuts. <laughs> like you're talking out your butt. So it's best to know what it is you're talking about before you talk about it. Next comment comes from Member Property Geek. And they say, pronoun are the parts of speech on the syntax key that confuse me. I don't know the difference between the twos, threes, and fours. Can you explain why each word is what it is? Well, as far as each word being the syntax key, as in twos, threes, and fours, verbs, adjectives, and pronouns, yes, I definitely can explain that. Oh, he says, oh, sorry, I spoke too soon. I will watch this multiple times today to practice. Okay, so, yeah, there, there's, the, there's a lesson in a nutshell right here. The answers to any grammar questions that you may have are here on this channel, in the videos, if you choose to put the work in and study. So here's a hit. Anyways, twos are verbs. Verbs can be either tangible or non-tangible. Verbs only exist in the fiction if they are being modified by ones, which are non-tangible contract adverbs. Threes are tangible contract, always tangible contract, Never non-tangible contract. Threes, adjectives, will modify other adjectives or pronouns, which is a four. Four is a pronoun. Pronoun can, like verbs, can either be tangible contract or non-tangible contract. Now, a four, a pronoun, can be any word in language or anything. If I put the number two on the dry erase board behind me by itself, it would be a pronoun because it has not been positioned with a position loadial fact, uh, position loadial set in front of it. So a pronoun either exists standing by itself or being modified by an adjective. Hope that helps. Next comment comes from Wyatt Hunter, and they say, Norma is also a constellation where the Freemasons got their logo, I found. So that's an interesting little side uh, study there, which what, what I don't know 
I can't certify if what Wyatt Hunter says is true or not, but I will say that the given shape of the constellation Norma is very, very, very similar to one of the logos of Freemasonry, for sure. Next comment comes from user hyphen blah, blah, blah. And they say, from my perception regarding the period in your last example of, and then they say CSS, C, P, S, G, but I don't know why they're using tildes rather than hyphens. I'd have to say, based upon the rest of the comment that I'm about to read, is from a lack of knowledge. The G has no period because there is no underlying period. This makes the G different from all previous abbreviations with periods. What are they talking about? I have no idea what they're talking about there. If it's an abbreviation, then the G would have a period. And if the G doesn't have a period, then it's obviously a typographical error. The non-underlying period to the right of the G serves one meaning, one function rule that ends the sentence. Yes, that serves the purpose of, as I said in the video, it brings a, stop, a full stop to the sentence as well as the G. If a single non-underlying period is being used for ending both the abbreviation of the letter G and the end of the sentence, that would be two meanings, two functions, a clear violation of the one meaning, one function rule. Is that correct? No, it is not correct. Because the period serves as a full stop, not only to the word grammar in that abbreviation, but also to the sentence. That's not a dual function. It's serving as a full stop. The difference between that period and the other periods is the underline, the bottom line. You add that mechanic to it, still remains under the auspices of one and one is one. The underline, the bottom line, is what makes the difference. I would propose the use of two periods after the letter G. Well, you can propose whatever you like, whoever you are. And that's how you can contract. But I do recommend that you learn this grammar first before you start doing things like that because if you try to contract with others using correct sentence structure who are using the rules of correct sentence structure communication parsing syntax grammar, you're probably going to have difficulty. The first period to the right of the letter G is underlined. This would end the abbreviation for the word grammar while maintaining the consistency with the string of the previous abbreviations in compliance with the one meaning one function rule. What I explained in the video is falling under the compliance with the one meaning one function rule. It is in compliance with it, as I just explained. The second period to the right of the first period is not underlined. This would end the sentence and maintain compliance with the rule one, with the rule of one meaning one function. While what you're saying, it's a convolution. My volition is to simplify things, distill things down. I don't want to add extraneous things that are not necessary. And through thousands of hours of countless studying, blood, sweat, and tears going back and forth with my tutor Raven and other individuals as well. These are the set of rules that we've come up with and they're solid. They comply with rule one rule equal. Um, so I, although I do appreciate what you're saying here, I personally see it's not necessary for what I do and what I've been doing for years. If you feel you're being damaged by what I'm doing, or been teaching with this period, then uh, you can take it up with me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com and I'll set up a video consultation and we can talk about it and maybe you can articulate a little more detail as to why you think the way that I'm doing things is damaging or causing harm of some, some sort or not correct because I see no really see no issue with what I'm doing. 
the period remains its uh, retains its function one function is bringing a full stop to whatever comes before it and the underline the bottom line adds a value to that do you see what I'm saying there's no modification there's no double meanings there's just added mechanics or taking away the mechanic as in the period the full stop at the end of the sentence with no underline you see what I'm saying finally I would add this to my dictionary if I had one well see there you go you don't have a dictionary you don't have a position right you don't know the grammar so again I highly recommend learning the grammar I like where your mind's at I definitely like the way you're thinking about this analytically be well T O O A also known as to me blah blah oh my goodness is this wow I think this individual has multiple YouTube um channels or nom de guerres one two three because they they're the one they're using here and then too is another one and then to me is another one why do people do that i have no idea why people do that it's uh yeah anyways thank you for the comment and uh I hope you found the comment that I responded, uh, the comment that I offered you in response. I hope you found that useful, and I hope you found what I said here useful. And again, you can contact me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com to discuss it further, or if you're really serious about learning the grammar, to apply for a workshop. Final comment. I thought of you today, Matthew. I don't understand why people do that. Clear as day, I say in many, many videos, my name is Colin Jason, I'm Matthew Colin Class. Please call me Jason. But people insist on using Matthew. Why that is, I don't know. Maybe they don't like the name Jason. When I watched and listened to one of Johann Bach's pieces played out on a Mobius strip because the music can be played forwards and backwards at the same time and still sound great. Well, that's interesting. I wonder what the connection to Johann's music writing style and quantum grammar, if any. Well, I'd have to guess that there is no connection. Because with quantum grammar, when you read a sentence forwards and backwards, the facts maintain the same value forwards as they do backwards. With music, if you play a piece forwards and backwards, the notes value changes. It's modified. So while it might still sound great, the value of the notes are not the same forwards as they are backwards. And the reason why I didn't publish this comment is because if this individual were to take the time to read the rules, uh, terms and conditions of the comments field, they would know that posting links to outside sources is not permitted, especially if non-quantum grammar related because this is a correct sentence structure communication parse syntax grammar channel. And I do appreciate people uh, honoring and being aware of those terms and conditions. But, you know, most people don't ever read them anyways. They just think they can say whatever they want. And that's the first step towards learning how to navigate with this grammar is to know where you are know the terms and conditions and honor those terms and conditions of the vessel you find yourself beside in or approaching if you'd like to learn correct sentence structure communication parse syntax grammar contact me at the email address listed at the bottom of your screen i will set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation between you and me you can ask me whatever you like and i'll do the same and we'll see if this is something that uh, you're prepared to commit to thank you again and I'll see you in the next one.